program initiated. His brother Michael is also satisfied. Welcome to Afrogenesis Artificial Intelligence. Two school dropouts in Kenya built an AI-powered prosthetic arm that reads brain signals and moves in less than two seconds. They made it entirely from electronics pulled out of trash heaps. No funding, no fancy lab, just a rusted shed next to a chicken coop. When they demonstrated it to US engineers, the response was shock. Nobody had ever seen anything like this. David Gothu, 30, and Moses Kuna, 29. Are David Gothu, Jerry, I am an innovator. Amika. My name is Moses Kinan Jaroge. Since my childhood, I've been a curious and a passionate innovator. And our dream is not only to live uh, five years is, or ten years, is to live hundreds of years trying to come up with ideas that will aid the mobility of persons living with disability or help persons who are in need. Cousins from Kikuyu in Kenya's Kayambu County. They work in a shed made from rusted iron sheets standing next to a chicken coop. The floor is gravel. Broken glass racked and tape fits loosely in window frames. The building shakes in strong winds. This is where they build robots. They've been doing this since childhood, dismantling toys, radios, and TVs despite spankings from parents who thought they were breaking things. But they weren't breaking things. They were learning how things worked. In 2009, while still in school, they had a classmate born without a hand. They watched him struggle to write, eat, and do other things that other children did with ease. They started asking themselves how they could help him and others move from being dependent to independent. In 2012, after their neighbor lost a limb in an industrial accident, they created their first prosthetic arm. But in August 2021, they unveiled something far more advanced, a brain-controlled, AI-powered biorobotic prosthetic. Here's how it works. A headset receiver sits on your head and picks up brain signals. When you think about moving your hand, specific electrical patterns occur. The headset detects these patterns, converts them into electric current through a neuro node biopotential receiver, then transmits commands wirelessly to the robotic arm at 350 megahertz. The arm executes the movement, all in less than two seconds. David explained the process. Here's how the device works. This hand is being controlled by this neurorode biopotential headset receiver that monitors or taps the brain signals and it extracts these specific features of these brain signals that reflect the intent of the user. The arm, that is, from the intraparenchymal single neuron units, when ion concentration changes inside the neuron cell membrane, an electric field is set up, and this signal it is being tapped or goes through various uh, tissues through the, the brain and the signal can travel through the pia mater arachnoid and uh, uh, it can travel through the skull, through the skin. Then this gadget taps those transductions of those uh, ion currents that are all electrical wave that the brain is releasing. This machine it can convert that signal or it taps and the signal processes converts this signal into a valid electric current through subcomputation and the final current is being transmitted into this arm via radio waves 315 megahertz those signals they go into the the, the biomechatronic hand or the arm uh, operating system then they are being aligned in a way that they will be converted to come to, to, a, to, to become a, a current, a valid current that will drive linear motors. These linear motors will drive the arm and they will, they, they, they will, they will close it open, making the hand, the whole hand, to pick as per how you are thinking, as per how you are controlling it, using your intentions. The signal starts from the upper motor neuron in your brain. After you think about grabbing something, an action potential travels from the upper motor neuron down through the spinal tract. Their device taps those electrical signals and redirects them to control the robotic arm instead of muscles that no longer exist. The arm has eight degrees of motion, shoulder rotation on X and Y axes, elbow movement on both axes, wrist rotation, and independent finger control for thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky fingers. It can hold objects, release them, lift them, pour water, perform most daily tasks. The extraordinary part? 
They built this entirely from AE waste. People throw away electronics that don't work, but often just one component is faulty while all the other parts still function perfectly. David and Moses scavenge everything they need, which saves them from having to spend money they don't have since nobody backs them financially. They scour dumping grounds around Nairobi for discarded gadgets. Old computer motherboards, LED lights, USB devices, switches, optical drives, heat sinks, fans, power supply units, plastic, rubber, wiring, wood, leather, materials that would cost serious money to buy new. The robotic hand runs on a battery and was constructed using EE waste, wood, leather, plastics, and salvaged wires. Well, there are 15 projects that we have already completed, as you have shown them. To, as we have shown them to you. The others, we can't be able to finish them. They are in the sector of energy. We have ideas in agriculture, security, new inventions that have never been invented. Also on models on how to employ the youths, new schemes that have not been invented and but due to lack of funds and resources because where we get our where we get our materials are from dump site are from old computers the e-waste materials so right now we don't have the cutting edge machines or a good laboratory with equipped with equipped gadgets where we can use them to to make far more affordable and f more affordable and durable products kenya used to import electronic discards from developed nations when the electronics stopped working they became ae waste polluting the environment david and moses believe their innovations helped tackle this problem while creating life-changing technology neither completed conventional education. This is upper limb by robotic arm that uses brain signals to operate. This device mechanability deploys eight degrees of motion. That is, it can rotate along the shoulder level, along y-axis, a dex axis, elbow level, along y-axis, and even x-axis. It has ability to twist the list or list pronation. It has ability to hold and delete. David dropped out of school at 17. Moses quit college a couple years later. But their appetite for learning never dimmed. The shelves in their lab are stacked with science books. The walls are covered with charts detailing human anatomy and the periodic table. They taught themselves neurophysiology by reading books and sitting with doctors who explained complex concepts to them. The World Health Organization warns that the high cost of prosthetics means only one out of 10 people who need them globally can access them. Kenya imports expensive prosthetics that cost thousands of dollars, completely unaffordable for most amputees. David and Moses wanted to solve their own problems instead of waiting for imported solutions. Their prosthetic could change that equation entirely. The brain-controlled arm isn't their only invention. They've created over a dozen devices. When COVID-19 struck, they built a decontamination device that sanitizes surfaces and floors. They created a device to sterilize banknotes using infrared technology. They developed a green energy generator that converts oxygen into electricity aimed at tackling climate change. David even tried building a glider drone early on because his passion was to become an aeronautic engineer. He dreamed of being either a pilot or an aircraft designer. When he built a glider that flew several meters above the ground, he watched it from below. Then one piece of metal failed to hold properly and the glider crashed into the ground. That crash made him realize aviation was too dangerous without proper resources. He abandoned the idea of becoming an aeronautic engineer and decided instead to create things that help society rather than risk killing himself. Takes engineer. When I designed this uh, drone, this grider that flew several, several meters above uh, the ground, it, uh, when, uh, when I, I saw everything on top, the grider uh, filled some uh, one piece of, um, uh, of a metal uh, filled to, to, to hold properly and the grider came down and uh, it struck on the ground. Why that didn't turn out well for David, he did make some cool things from that passion. Take this drone that he designed. And from there I realized that is so dangerous and I thought if I want to continue to be a pilot it is not this way 
but to try something else different and uh, the idea of becoming an aeronautic engineer I uh, went there and uh, I went uh, it, it, it got off uh, my mind and I thought of uh, creating something different that will help the society rather than killing myself that's where I met my friend in, uh, on, uh, in the high school and uh, we started uh, the thought of th when they showcased their ai powered prosthetic to u.s engineers the response was astounding one american engineer admitted they had seen impressive prosthetics before but nothing like what david and moses created the level of innovation and technological expertise these two kenyans demonstrated was truly remarkable David Menge from the Association for the Physically Disabled of Kenya describes such inventions as the future of artificial limb science. This is exactly the kind of technology needed to ease the challenges people with disabilities face. Mukura Mengi, founder of the Jasiri Mugumo School in Nairobi, stated that these two inventors prove Africans can make significant contributions to technology and science. Their work will improve the economy through production while making technology more acceptable to society. The devices aren't ugly or bulky, they're easier for people with disabilities to handle. It's a complete game changer. But there's a problem. David and Moses have completed 15 projects so far, but many others remain unfinished. They have ideas in energy, agriculture, security, completely new inventions that have never existed, and new schemes for employing youth. But they can't finish these projects due to lack of funds and resources. They get their materials from dump sites, from old computers, from waste materials. They don't have cutting-edge machines or a proper laboratory with equipped gadgets that would allow them to make far more affordable and durable products. Their workshop is filled with half-finished inventions gathering dust because they lack funding to complete them. They have many ideas that could become commercially viable businesses, but they lack finances and support. Mangi, who regularly invites them to mentor children at his school, points out a deeper issue. Invention is not a discipline taught in Kenyan schools, yet innovation is exactly what will drive the future. Think about what these two accomplished with literally nothing. No university degrees, no research grants, no venture capital, no government support, just a rusted shed, discarded electronics, science books, and relentless curiosity. They taught themselves neurophysiology, robotics, AI programming, electrical engineering, and mechanical design. They built a brain-controlled prosthetic that rivals devices created by well-funded Western labs with teams of PhD researchers. This is what African innovation looks like when it's allowed to flourish. Resourceful, practical, focused on solving real problems for real people, and absolutely world-class. David and Moses aren't waiting for permission or funding or recognition. They're just building the future with their own hands, one piece of trash at a time. The impact extends beyond technology. Their achievement challenges narratives that have historically erased or marginalized African contributions to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. For too long, the story has been that innovation happens in Silicon Valley, in European labs, in well-funded institutions. David and Moses prove that innovation happens wherever brilliant minds refuse to accept limitations. Their story is also a mirror reflecting what could be possible if African innovators had even a fraction of the resources their Western counterparts take for granted. Imagine what David and Moses could build with a proper lab with reliable electricity, with access to quality materials instead of scavenging trash heaps, with funding to complete their 15-plus unfinished projects, with mentorship and connections to manufacturers who could bring their inventions to market. The cousins dream of turning their inventions into a thriving business that creates jobs and makes assistive technology affordable across Africa. Their dream isn't to live just five or 10 years, but to live hundreds of years coming up with ideas that aid the mobility of people living with disabilities or help people in need. Right now, their brain-controlled prosthetic represents not just a technological achievement, but a declaration. African innovation doesn't need charity. It needs investment. It doesn't need saving. It needs support. And it doesn't need to prove itself to anyone, because David Gathu and Moses Kuna already proved what's possible when genius meets determination. 2. Afrogenesis Artificial Intelligence Assistant Systems Online Systems Booting In Few Minutes Please wait until you see a color blue light, then say the word. Jeff is the password you... Systems online. Police give way. Demonstrating the flow of the bio-robotic arm system under self-testing. Articulations levels. Protocol sequences. Activation.